Hi guys, hope everyone's okay. I always wear blue with it because once she said I suited it. So I always, I dug this out. Literally guys, I have no clothes here because I flew over here thinking we'd only be here for a couple of weeks. And I packed in the suitcase um, just supplements and protein powders. So if I keep wearing the same things, basically that's why. And there's no, normally I just whiz to H&M and get a different top, but sorry, I'm just constantly in my old gear. So Pippa's just joining us. Um, we want to talk about gut health um, because for me, that was like a breakthrough when I understood how my gut connected with my brain. I get depressed, I get addicted, um, I get all the negative things that you have going on in your brain. I can get anxious, I can get rage. So basically, if I eat well, I've now discovered through trial and error and tons of cash on waste of time tests, I've now realized that um, if I eat the wrong thing, I will pay for it in my thinking. And that for me is um, a great way to stick to a healthy diet. It's like almost just being able to press fast forward. I know you've asked to join, Pippa. I can't get you to join. Hang on. Um, it's like being able to fast forward and say, what is this next, next item? Hi, Pippa. What's this next item I'm putting in oh, my mouth? What's it going to do to my brain? Join. Hi. I know. It just kept I saying. I did not happen. I only, thinking, so. I only just got the invite. So I don't know what happened. And I, I was just watching everything go up. And I was like, I'm such a techie nerd. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm crap, as you well know. Well, we're all but learning. Yes, I do love you in blue, and I did say it once. And I did you did say it once, blue. and I'm just like, that's so, so, such a people please. Oh, she won't like me as much if I don't wear blue. I mean, my thinking is... <laughs> that is so hilarious. In fact, I don't normally wear grey. I normally wear the kind of pink ones. So, sorry, guys. So, okay, I'm going to go on uh, straight away. Are you going to start with the biggest one? Do you want the biggest one out of all the questions I got? We're getting the same question coming up. It's bloating. So this yeah. is a huge, a huge one. Um, so bloating, I know you've probably got your questions there, Davinia. There could be many reasons for this. And I, I typed something up and I'm not sure if you can see this. You see, can you see it or is it back to front? It's back to front. So you oh. can read it out. But when I do the video and put it on YouTube, Yes. If you send me that, I'll spin it around and we'll put it up and we'll leave it over our Excellent. faces for a few minutes while people can write it down. Brilliant. This is how okay. much I'm on it. I've got That's a great guy in really the doing some editing for me. So it's all going to go on YouTube. It was meant, I think it started today, but good. I don't have a YouTube code. I don't have a, an Instagram code. It's all gone to shit. It's all right. Just get a man. Just get a man to do it. Just, exactly. Just get, Superman. Well, I have a woman in America. Superman Alex and the Beef is doing it. Perfect. Okay. So, um... Wrong gut bacteria is one of them. So you can have, you know, missing some good bacteria, but you might have the presence of bad bacteria. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, it's really important to always start with getting rid of your bad bacteria. Because if you pile in with probiotics and you've got bad bacteria, one, it could make things worse and you could actually sort of have this explosion kind of thing, effect. Um, or it's just not going to do anything because your bad bacteria will just kind of gobble it up and it, so that probiotic won't do anything. Um, wrong food can cause bloating, which I think a lot of you know that you eat certain things and it causes bloating. Other times you may not know because you're just bloated all the time. I know somebody just said they feel like they're six months pregnant. Yeah, yeah I've had that. that. Is really, really Always. common. Really yeah. common. Yeah. Yeah. Um, too much stress. So I've had a client, you know, well, a few clients where, and I wouldn't say this is the usual, where we have got rid of their bloating purely from dealing with their stress. I didn't actually recommend, yes, I changed their sort of diet. Um, I didn't recommend any probiotics or any particular gut supplements. We work purely on stress. So important to consider that. Some people so think my, they feel better my, my than little hacks, My little hacks for stress are get on a spike mat. If you can't meditate, which I can't, I mean, I try, get on a spike mat. It is the first step into it. $19.99 on Amazon Prime. Get one with a pillow. It will change your life. And you can also stand yeah, on it in the morning and lighten yourself up as well. So that's just one little tip there without even changing your diet. Um, so number four, I've got too much wind or gas, as the Americans say. So that just having the wind will cause that distension, that big tummy. Um, then inner immune system is just your immune system just reacting too much. 
um, can't digest food properly. So you could be perhaps um, lacking in digestive enzymes. Um, and then the last one, which I think all of us are guilty of, is not breathing properly or not breathing properly enough. And even that alone um, can cause bloating if you're not breathing properly and not engaging that parasympathetic nervous system. And it's actually the most sort of alkaline thing you can do is slow breathing, breathing in for four, hold for one, out for six, six or eight. So just make sure that out breath is longer. It's not a huge breath, just a sort of a natural medium breath. So some of you may have done yoga um, and it's not the really deep breathing. It's just a medium breath that you can do every hour for a few minutes. Um, so so that's, that's the the so, Okay, somebody's just said they're on a spike mat listening to this and they can't feel the difference. Okay, well, when you finish listening to this, turn, Get get off and try it again. Put it on your bed and just feel your body pulse. You'll be able to feel your your skin around that area sort of pulsate. Just zone in on your body. You'll 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 feel it. You can't not. You, your skin your skin will do the healing for you. Okay, so I've just got a question before it goes. Is aloe vera good for acid reflux or gastritis? I I, I don't personally use aloe vera, but I've heard that some people find it can be helpful in calming things down. Um, I use some slightly different sort of things. Um, for gastritis, there is actually a brilliant supplement called Gastrozyme, which is brilliant. I even had my mother on that, which just sort of calmed everything down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, by all means, try it. I tend to find it's never just one supplement or, or one thing. It's normally a combination of things, so diet and supplements. And that person you said about the spike mat, um, yeah, they're lying on it while they're listening to us, and we're rabbiting on. <laughs> so try it in a quiet quiet zone and then just trust it it will work yeah. you can't know. okay right so there's some of the reasons why you might be bloated let's whisk through some of these questions and then we'll come up with some solutions as well yeah. so and we'll go can... through a bit more about these bloated reasons because somebody's already said there how to get rid of bad bacteria so um do you want me to answer that one now or do you want to crack on with your Let, let's go through the ones that yeah. that were on the main page because yeah. i'm sure you know i'll write okay so one. i've had this question a few times 7 p.m. and 4 p.m. sugar cravings. Yeah. Okay. What's so that? maybe gut, but it may not be. Um, I'd be looking at what you're, you know, what you're eating at breakfast and lunch, making sure there's enough protein, making sure your blood sugars aren't dropping. Okay. So I'd be looking at that, your balance of blood sugars, because if you're eating quite carby meals, then the chances are your blood sugars are going to be dropping. Um, I'd be also looking at... So maybe not enough the, protein then for breakfast and lunch. Yeah. If that yeah, and make sure you're not having, because, you know, those sort of carby meals, which will, you know, you'll crave sugar and you might have sort of slightly high blood glucose. Um, I'll be looking at liver energy and I'll be looking at cortisol. Is it that your cortisol is low later on in the day? You know, is it that when you're, you're tired, your cortisol's dropping and the sugar is giving you a cortisol hit? So, um, yeah, I'd be sort of, you know, making sure you, once you've adjusted your diet, then if you think it might be cortisol, maybe do a cortisol test. Uh, yeah, what's the name of that brand? It's like £85, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, there's the £83 pound one. In fact, I must get that on my website so people can have a go, uh, you know, and buy it direct. So it's from Regener Regenerous Labs, um, right. and it's Adrenal Functional Function Panel. Um, could be HOR5. But I'll, I'll get it on my website. I'll get it on my website tomorrow um, because that's quite... I mean, I may have already got it on. I can't remember. But um, it's a really good test, and it's it's not too expensive. Um, okay. Yes, I do do. I don't. Well, FaceTime. I do Zoom consultations, but if that doesn't work, yes, we can do FaceTime consultations. Okay. Um, right. Right. Next one is um, what about kefir? Okay. Well, for some people, kefir is great. It's a great probiotic food, um, and I think if you try it and you feel that it works, you don't react to it, then give it a go. I find some people don't get on with kefir. It can be a bit too explosive for them. Um, doesn't always mean, but it could mean that there's some bad bacteria there because sometimes, especially candida, if then you go and put in sort of like fermented foods, um, you can actually make matters worse. But if you don't react to it, you know, you'll know that if you don't, if you don't react to it, then I'm sure it's absolutely fine. Okay, great. It's, it's easy as well. And it's cheap to do yourself, isn't it? To make yeah. some fear. Okay. What effects does alcohol have on the gut? 
Okay, so a lot of things. I'd be more concerned about alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you know, well, alcohol sales have gone up by 20% since lockdown. I can imagine. In the UK. I was just talking to Matthew about being in lockdown. And I, if I was drinking, and I wouldn't have even noticed two months going by. But I thought, what are you talking about? What pandemic? We've had a great time. Yeah. We've had our best lives. Ugh. Yeah, I think it's easy to pass the time doing that. Yeah, people are drinking more. They're also doing like Zoom is, you know, heaving. People are having Zoom parties and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, so sales are up. So alcohol will deplete loads of vitamins and minerals, okay? I mean, it's going to do a, a loads more sort of harm to your body than, than just this in, in simple forms. Um, it will deplete a lot of nutrients, particularly B vitamins, actually. Okay. And what we do, we need B vitamins for brain function, for, you know, for gut health, energy, so important. I mean, you know, I, I do take B vitamins. I think they're so do I, yeah. kind of a low level B vitamin I take. But I take um, a high level B vitamin, don't I? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I take B12 as well, but you, you need a slightly higher one. So um, I think that but you don't drink alcohol and then just take your B vits. So it's just saying that alcohol will deplete a lot of your nutrients. And, you know, over time, it's just going to irritate the gut lining. Um, it can affect then your organs. You, know, you can end up if you're drinking too much pancreatitis, um, you know, sort of problems with the liver. So it's be mindful of alcohol. Uh, um, you know, I'm not talking about sort of, I'm talking about some excessive amounts, but even small amounts will deplete nutrients. So if you are on, I mean, if you're on a, a, a gut healthy mission, it's probably not the best diet to, idea to do it. Wait till you're healed. Wait till your gut can take it. Wait till you've like healed leaky gut or whatever. And then, then you, you, your body should be able to metabolize it, right? Because mm. the problems with alcohol, it's absorbed in the stomach. It goes straight in, whereas the other nutrients have to sort of pass. Everything else has to pass through, and then we get it. We absorb it. But alcohol and water get absorbed through the stomach, so it's pretty immediate. Yeah. That's why we feel it so quickly. So um, you know, and it, it just you don't even people don't realize the burden on their liver. Um, you know, even sort of, I'm not, I'm not talking about just the old glass, you know, here and there, but, you know, it, it really can put burden in the liver, especially if you have a snip on the alcohol gene, which I know I do because I get hangovers, so I knew I did. Okay, okay. I mean, when I was drinking heavy, I got told that this was my solution. Um, my mum took me to a doctor and they did some liver tests. I mean, they said, if you have one more drink, you will die. So um, I went to another doctor. Ah, you, you, you see, people do that sometimes. They go to someone because they're not hearing what they want to hear. Um, how do I get, bad, good, uh, get rid of bad bacteria? Um, yes, you can. I mean, you can see it in a, a stool test if you've got bad bacteria. So that's the ideal. Um, but you know what? A lot of the time I don't get my clients to do stool tests. You know, I, I, you know from working them, I get them to do the online health questionnaire. And by doing the consultation, I quite often know um so you know i know what to do so but stool test can be great but i'm not saying you have to shell out 300 400 pounds one okay okay i mean there is there is a stool test that you can do um i'm going to get a deal with them i went down to their headquarters and spoke to their um uh what, what one of their um head pra practitioners there called uh, got um atlas biomedical sorry can't think um, and they're going to do as a deal. Now, that won't tell you if you've got candida or parasites, but it will tell you what b uh, bacteria you might be lacking in and what diet to implement to high rows to um, help you out there and target which, um, which foods to have. So basically, for me, when I did mine, it told me I was low on a certain bacteria and to up my kefir. So it was as simple as that, really. Just Is like it just a stool test? Is it stool it test? It is, but it's a very, very small one. It's not, a, okay. it's not like the ones I've done where you've got to do three separate yeah, foods. Yeah, yeah, on that's separate the ones I, do. I mean, which, to be honest, me being me, I'm quite excited about things like that. But this one is a very, very small one. In fact, I'm going to post uh, an interview I did with him. I'll do it tomorrow as a follow-up and I'll try and get us a discount code. I yeah. think it retails at 150 So I'll try yeah. and get us some money off. Because, I mean, we may as well do poo tests yeah. while we're all in lockdown, There's right? It's a slightly cheaper for a slightly cheaper route, I mean, it's like a sort of starting point. There's um, an organic acids test that I do, and it can show you where you're missing. So it can show if you've got bad gut, ba ba bad gut bacteria. It can show candida, um, and it can show Ooh, you're lacking in certain one. vitamins as well. So that's quite a nice one. Um, so, yeah, I think that's quite a nice starting point. I mentioned that to someone else the other day. So it's called, it's from Regenerous as well, Regenerous Labs, and it's called um, OATS test, so the organic acids test.
Okay, um, someone's saying it's really expensive. Uh, so there's the basic one, microbiome one is 150 or something around that, I think. Right. Yeah. They're all around about the 100 pound yeah. mark. Aren't they, but yeah, sort? I mean, a really comprehensive stool test is more expensive, uh, you know, a lot more expensive. But, you know, I don't always do, as a first point of call, I don't always get people to do a stool test. That's yeah. not actually my first line at all. You know, I yeah. do the consultation. I can quite often work out what's going on. If then I feel there's, we need further testing, then I'll go there. But that's not something I'll do necessarily straight away. No. But I mean, if you are at home and you can't afford to see a practitioner and you want to just go the self-care route, I mean, personally, I found it quite, because I'm, I'm not a medic, you know, I've not got any qualifications. I, I kind of did this, I navigated it myself, this whole health thing. And I did spend a fortune, but I'm just sort of like explaining the ones that... I found useful, interesting, exciting to find out. And I do think just knowing what you're back, if you've got a good diversity of, of microbiome, it's kind of nice to know. And it's yes. nice to know which way you're going to talk. And it just from a self-care point of view, I'd rather have that than a new pair of shoes, I'll be honest with you. Or mm. I'd, I'd rather have that for Christmas or for my birthday from Matthew and the kids. Like I got an aura ring instead of anything, you know, glamorous. That's what I go for now. It's just whatever you want to prioritize. If you, you, do you know, it's like Mother's Day stuff. I'd, I'd always opt for There you go, healthy. get a poo test, get a poo test your birthday. Get a poo test, it's glamorous, it's the new black. Hmm. Okay, I mean, so, yeah. Okay. moving on now, how do you know if you've got a parasite or candida? And how do you know when your gut's healthy? Right, well, you're going to have symptoms. If you've got bad gut, well, not always. Some people do carry a parasite at small amounts and never know, but therefore, if they're not getting symptoms, but... Um, Generally, if you've got bad gut bacteria, you've got candy, you're going to get a sign of some sort. Now, it's not always obvious, but the obvious ones, which we talked about the other day, the first obvious ones will be you'll be craving sugar. Um, you are likely to have wind and that wind is quite likely to smell. Um, yeah. You could be feeling quite tired, especially sort of when you eat and you could feel sort of then quite tired after eating. You may sometimes people have itchy ears, sort of itchy gap. Now, you won't necessarily have all of these things, but, you know, those are certain um, signs. But, you know, you can get other, other signs as well. So gut imbalances don't always manifest themselves as gut imbalances. So it could be wow. brain fog. Yeah. It could be yeah, brain definitely. fog. So we've got, you know, the vagus nerve sort of running in between. But I've had, I've had someone who um, had bad gut bacteria and they had swelling in their hands. You know, so it's... Oh, it somebody just mentioned always. that. Somebody just mentioned that. Does the menopause and thyroid make you puffy and bloated everywhere, especially my hands? Oh, apparently I'm dark. Hang on. Yes, you are. I'm going to go covert. <laughs> Hang on. Turn the light on. Okay. Yeah. So, well done mentioning that. There you go. Yeah. So that could be interesting that her hands are. Is swelling. that all right? There she is. Got the weird painting behind me. Fine. Weird. Good. So what do you think about that? Menopause, thyroid makes you puffy, especially my hands. Could that be got related? Yeah, I mean, menopause, thyroid, mm, maybe not. I think that's water retention. Um, I mean, look, if there's a lack of bile flow, so bile is made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, if there's a lack of bile flow and things flowing through nicely, then you can certainly feel puffy, for sure. So that'd be something to look at. Uh, lack of electrolytes as well. Um, but I think it's probably yeah. more menopause and thyroid related. But I think, it, you know, it still could be sort of that bile flow. And um, as long as you're drinking lots and lots of water, then, yeah, then I think we need water to... Water with electrolytes, that. not just still water. Yeah, so make sure you put some salts in there, a little bit of lemon. Don't listen to people and they say, oh, your teeth are going to fall out because of the lemon. Just brush your teeth after. Get, make sure you rehydrate your body. Then your body can function. That's the whole point. If you're just drinking loads and loads of bottled water, you're just going to flush so many minerals out of you. Particularly if I've been training in the gym, I make sure I always have a pinch of salt in my drink. Okay. But somebody said if they eat lots of veg, they, they just get loads of pains. Well, yeah, I mean, you can do if, you're, if you've got bad gut bacteria, if you've got SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and it's, so that's in bacteria in the wrong place. Um, then you know, I mean, I yeah. blow, I blow it up with veg. You know, yeah. if, I, if I eat the wrong ve veg, if it's got lots of oxalates in it, that's yeah. why I'm. I mean, I've tried the vegan, I've tried vegetarian, and I do better on just maybe mainly protein. So that's why I don't promote vegan for everyone because I mean, I suppose 
some people get really bad reactions. First of all, I put on weight and my stomach swells up like I'm six months pregnant and I get wind. So obviously my gut isn't evolved in the way to just process that amount of vegetables mm. or that amount of- And if you're lucky in digestive enzymes. Vegetables. Yeah, I mean, if you're, lucky in di if you're lucky in digestive enzymes, then you might not yeah. be able to cope with a huge plate of vegetables. I mean, I had cancer in my early twenties and a, yeah, a plate of vegetables, a big salad with raw vegetables would have just sent me over the edge. That's why this- yeah, this raw food sort of craze for yeah. some people is not great. It really upsets their stomach. Um, okay. Somebody tested positive for H. pylori. Try mastic yeah. gum. So, Say that again. Yeah, mastic gum. It's a supplement. Mastic. It's from the Cypress tree, Cyprian tree. Mastic gum. Um, leaky How gut that's... and autoimmune. Any advice? Yes. Have you worked on healing that gut lining? That's absolutely cru crucial. Um, so if you haven't, that's for if you've got sort of leaky gut and, and autoimmune because there's strong links between intestinal permeability and autoimmune diseases. So work on that leaky gut because that's when virus and bacteria can get in. And, and I'd always like have a look at, there's a really good protocol called Walls Protocol as well, yeah. Dr. Sherry yeah. Walls. It's amazing. Follow her. She has recipes on every day. She heals herself. She's a proper doctor. She's not yeah. like me, just trying everything to see what works. Yeah. But she, and when she's she really got really herself good. out of, out of like virtual paralysis and she's now riding bikes and everything. Absolutely incredible doctor. Okay. Speaking of doctors, antibiotics. How do you repair your gut after antibiotics? Is it possible? I've heard it take okay. like 12 months to get take, your gut. Take fish. this during antibiotics. Take right. Saccharomyces boulardii. It's a probiotic yeast. It will help your, your gut, protect your gut from um, antibiotics. Because you can't take any other probiotics during antibiotics because it's just going to kill it off. So take that during Saccharomyces boulardii. You can get from anywhere. And then... This particular one, now I don't think you can get this formula from anywhere else other than NutriLink. This is very good for the gut after. It's a particular probiotic that is good for after antibiotics. And it's um, Lactobacillus plantarum ramenosus salivarius. <laughs> and in English again, what's, what's the pretty picture say? <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm going to put all of this on uh, a link. Yes, you anyway. can. Saccharomyces, so, sorry. Yeah, Saccharomyces right. boulardii. I'm going to put all of this on the link, so don't worry about the long Latin words. Yeah. And so that S. boulardii, I just call it S. boulardii or S. B. Um, we take it when we're traveling as it's first line of defense of the body, and we're taking it at the moment because of coronavirus. Great. Good to know. Um, okay, I mean, actually, I've got a story about uh, uh, probiotics. I was lucky enough, I went uh, with a friend of mine, down to um, the Simprove um, place where they, where they manufacture it. And it was just down in Surrey, really nice family setup. And what an incredible story. And he was telling me that the reason why Simprove works is because it's a liquid and the body has not yet identified um, liquid as say a toxin. So if you've got a, a piece of meat that's, or, or a vegetable or whatever, that's stagnated and it, and, it's, and it's suddenly become harmful, if you eat that, your stomach acid will attack it and kill it off. But if that say, same piece of meat was sat in water and you drank the water, it would get down through the gut into the lower intestines. It would get past the stomach acid. So that's why they're having such great results with Simproof because it's not a solid. The stomach hasn't yet identified liquid as a problem. So I really, I was fascinated by that. And the other thing with Simproof is it was developed for cows because when cows weren't allowed to, obviously after all the, uh, the, the uh, antibiotics they were given and it was getting into our food chain, our government decided to stop at the use of antibiotics. So that's how they started treating the cows with Simprove at first, which I found fascinating. So I've, I've run out of Simprove now, I've not got any more, but I find, I, I find it really quite a nice supplement to have. And it only takes like 24 hours to get into your system. It's a fast acting one. So if you can get hold of it, get it. And the kids like it when there's, there's a passion fruit one that's quite good. So I, I'd recommend Simprove just because I've quite enjoyed the science as well. So there we go. Uh, right. Um, next one, uh, da, 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 da. Or a sh okay, again, sugar cravings, and she eats chocolate every day. 
Uh, I just wanted to mention how I, when I was doing a candida diet, trying to get rid of uh, candida, I was uh, recommended glutamine powder under my tongue, under there for 30 seconds. You just, um, higher nature have got it and it's uh, an amino acid. And basically you just get a half a teaspoon, tip it under your tongue, it doesn't taste sweet and you just absorb it into your bloodstream straight away. It's kind of a good hack to take away that immediate craving to just give you time to get away from the fridge or I don't know, do something else in the house while you've got, while that ravenous rage is on you. So invest in some glutamine powder if that, that mania for food or for sugar comes on, it might just give you a little bit of time to distract yourself. Okay, next question. Oh, SIBO. Ah, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Right, this is a kind of uh, topic in itself. Um, but this is where bacteria can um, grow in the wrong part. So rather than large intestine, the small intestine. Um, um, this does take specialist sort of um, diet because um, you have to go on a low FODMAP diet, which ideally you shouldn't do for more than, you know, a couple of months, three months. But there is a really good app to follow for this. It's um, by Monash University. And there's a, it, there's a, it's an app. And it will give you all the color code of the foods that you can and can't eat. So whilst you're doing that, it's, it's brilliant, okay? So whilst you're doing that, then also you need to um, get rid of that bad bacteria. Now, it might be that oregano works for you. It might be that capricillic acid, sort of everyone's different eating to them. But that's a really good app that you can follow um, to follow a low FODMAP diet because it's, it is complicated. What's, what's the app one more time? Monash University. So they have... I think it's the actual. We'll, 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 I'll tell. I'll tell you, Davinia, and then you can put it on your on a post I tomorrow. Um, right. But I think it, I um, think it's just if they Google it, it's it's by they developed this app, app. Monash University developed this app so that then um, people can go in and see all the low FODMAP foods and color coded. Um, but just okay. because, yeah. So some people, you know, that SIBO, they do have SIBO, but some people have put on a low FODMAP diet and they don't have SIBO. Um, it is very restrictive. So. You should only really follow that diet if, you, if you're sure that you've got SIBO. Um, okay, make sure it's one where you should really invest in a test, isn't it? And don't yeah, just guess I mean, that's like sort of testing. Um, what, test, what test would you recommend for SIBO and if you need to go on a FODMAP diet? Because right, it is a well, tough one. Yeah, I mean, again... Can you just explain like, what FODMAP is quickly, just while people... Yeah, that's just it's an acronym for all the things that, you know, people should be sort of avoiding. So it's the, so the different sort of like carbohydrates and sugars and things. So there are certain vegetables foods. that are OK and certain vegetables that aren't. But it is it is really complicated. Um, I have to say that in all the sort of years I've been working with clients, you know, I don't come across loads of SIBO. Now, I know some practitioners specialize in SIBO. I've managed to, you know, um, you know, help people and they've got better and they sorted their bloating out. Um, without having to go down that route. So there aren't, um, I mean, occasionally I have, but I haven't been able to do it very often. I mean, sometimes it's literally a matter of eliminating the foods. And what I would say is, um, you know, just try cutting out gluten and dairy and see how you feel. Those are the worst offenders. Just see, cut out gluten and dairy for four weeks, see how you feel. If you feel better, well then, whoa, that's great. You know, you know that it's sort of those diet related and if, if you do feel better, then reintroduce it and you're going to know. You're going to know. Um, also, there, there is an interesting uh, supplement called Antrantil. Um, it's American. I've had it before, years ago. But have a read about it. I'll put the... It's quite... I mean, it's about a pound, um, a, a tablet. But he thinks that he can heal SIBO with it um using uh, all natural remedies inside of it and tantril have a look at the website see what you think of it it's from the state so again it will cost a bit to get it over but maybe after all this craziness is finished it might be something to look into and it could be it, it could it could help you okay um but, but, oh cost effective and non-testing ways to heal your gut because people are on a serious budget at the moment i'd always say bone broth yeah right now yeah. I mean, I think it's easy. It's cheap. Yeah, so you can make it yourself. Like, I mean, you're roasting a chicken anyway. You're roasting legs, whatever. So bone broth, yes. I mean, Sorry. don't go mad on drinking it sort of all day because obviously, you know, there can be, we've shown, research has shown that it can um, uh, 
these sort of chicken bones and beef bones, animal bones can, there's a lot of lead that can build up in these bones. So yes, drink it, but you know, like anything, just that, go, go that, that, that depends on where, where the animal's been raised and what they've been fed. So if you, no, have, this it, is why I always say invest in a decent farm. Yeah. So you know that they're eating organically. So chickens, for example, are not vegetarian. They don't live on corn and they shouldn't be bright yellow. So I wouldn't personally make bone broth out of a non-organic yeah. chicken. Definitely just stick like, to I'm just going to draw out more of the nastiness because that's yeah. where it's stored in their bones. That's why if I have a chicken, it's more expensive, but I'm going to get to use it about four times. Yeah. So that's why I always buy and organic I think making, chicken. I think making your own is ideal. This lead is actually coming from jet fuel, believe it or not. That's where they think a lot of it's coming from and just in the environment. But yeah. um, I think if you're making it, your own i mean making and you know those you know chicken carcasses as you said if you're roasting a chicken it's kind of free so that's exactly. a really cheap and and it is you've done a video on it it's you know it's not difficult is it so just everyone go back and watch that video um and it makes it, the house smell really nice and cozy as well yeah so things like bone broth um yeah. vitamin d um vitamin a rich foods as much people don't like liver and things like that um but you know liver pate that's another one yeah. it's cheap as anything because obviously a lot of people don't want to buy it because they think it's yeah. awful and it's not good for you after the old mad cow disease thing but if you go into your supermarket find some organic liver and just i, I said i did a post about it all over sourdough lovely loads of butter boom what happens if you're vegetarian what's what's good for for a gut if you're vegetarian well, I mean, I know you can sort of get sort of marine college. But yes, you're not going to get that same kind of, um, I mean, obviously, if you're vegetarian, you're not eating fish, but you're not going to get that kind of collagen, no, if you're vegetarian. So you can't get that. But you can work on other things like zinc. And you've got things like, you know, pumpkin seeds and all the different sort of seeds as well. Um, so you can still get things from vegetarian sources. It, you know, some, sometimes it's harder for certain things but absolutely you can get a lot of nutrients from vegetarian sources as well so as long as you're having a very varied diet i mean this is the thing a lot of people are eating the same things every day and you think yeah. as hunter gatherers you know we kind of like would have been it much more sort of diverse in sort of our different foods so i think people are getting there well, we would have eaten nose to tail anyway we would have been yeah. nose and uh, we would have foraged as well. Like the, the, the vegetables would have been like in between each meat meal. So again, it was what was seasonal, I suppose, mm. isn't it? Yeah, I think, um, so I think you need to just expand your diet really and get, you know, just eat lots of different types of vegetables and different colors as well. Can I ask you as well, what grains inflame the gut? Because I get seriously bloated if I have grains that aren't like sourdough you know yeah. if I have a bowl of porridge that isn't gluten free I'll bloat up straight away even though I consider my gut to be healthy nowadays I mean way way back in the day if I had one bit I'd be huge you know I'd just be massive I'd look six months pregnant but over the years I think I've built up some sort of tolerance in my gut I've probably healed that leaky gut I mean I was on a very highly processed diet I was drinking alcohol even when I came off the alcohol I turned to processed food Domino's pizzas takeaways oh I deserve it because I'm not had a drink blah 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 I don't deserve it. I don't deserve leaky gut. And I certainly don't deserve the, the mood hangover I, I, either afterwards. So what sort of grains can people avoid? Because often you say, oh, it's whole wheat, it's whole grain. But even then, because it's yeah, in that nice no. packaging, it makes you think, oh, God, that's good. That's healthy. It's good for me. And it's well, full and, of and brown, no brown, rice, you know, grains. brown rice can be full of arsenic. So actually, you know, my children, I give my children basmat, white basmati. Yeah, me too. Um, so, yeah. okay, I don't personally don't get on with any grains really very, very much at all. So I hardly eat any grains at all. I'm gluten free, but I hardly eat any grains. Um, I mean, I've worked on my gut for years. I used to be the six months pregnant one, you know, in my 20s and I had candida. Now, not everyone who's bloated has distension. Um, but it's really horrible when you've got distension. As well, so you feel bloated. Yeah, it's embarrassing. You, 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 well. you, look, you, um, you look overweight anyway. But yeah, and it just feels you, you, sluggish and your jeans won't do well. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. So, um, so yeah, so what I would say is, is that, um, yeah, in terms of, you know, sort of, I suppose, sort of going back, going back to grains things, try it out. So if we're doing this, you know, working this out for free, which you can do, try an elimination diet. An elimination diet you want to try for four weeks, so 28 days, okay? So if you want to cut out gluten and dairy, but maybe you want to cut out oats as well and cut out, all grains if you really feel that they might be contributing to bloating as well and gut issues and then you can bring things back in slowly just one week one week one thing 
next week another thing so you can do this for free at home you can do it yourself it's an elimination diet and you can you can give it a go what about organic brown rice and people are fascinated about the rice <laughs> that the arsenic thing i know nothing i'd say a lot of us nutritious we're not we're not now sort of necessarily recommending the brown rice that we all were before um yeah it's still you know it can still be full of um arsenic as well so, and also I found, um, I find it sometimes bloats more, the brown rice as opposed to the white rice. If it, well, Although the high think... fibre, high fibre, some yeah. people. Um, somebody mentioned about eggs. Yes, yeah, so I'd say after gluten and dairy, eggs would be the next thing that people react to. And on food intolerance testing, that comes up a lot. Yeah. Okay, I really wanted to get this question because I know you're okay. eager and we've already okay. gone over. I do. Always do. Um, so one lady, she's, uh, she's got colitis after, yes. after having her son a few years ago. And she also has got Hashimoto's as well. She drinks bone broth, fasts, she takes collagen, she avoids inflammatory foods. But do you know what? She gets up three times a night to go to Usula and she has done for five years. I feel desperately sorry for her. Okay, so absolutely need to heal the gut lining. Um, this is where investing, actually, you probably will need to invest in supplements. I would be, first, first thing though, before anything, I'd be following more of a paleo diet. So that will be grain free. That won't be tomatoes. I'd be taking all the, anti all the inflammatory foods out. Um, I know it's tough, but I'd yeah. be following a paleo diet, maybe not even legumes as well. Um, so no sort of um, beans and pulses and things like that. Um, and then healing the gut lining. Okay, so you've got to get out those foods and then healing the gut lining and getting the right probiotics in and maybe cycling those probiotics, but absolutely crucial to heal that gut lining as well. Um, so it's like just calming everything down. Maybe. Okay, I'm desperate for her to get a decent night's sleep because it's that oh, vicious circle, isn't it? I mean, that's just, it's awful. Yeah, I mean, I do have sort of Crohn's and colitis clients and things. Um, but um, what's this I'm saying, Boris? Uh, Boris is in intensive care. Oh, right. I, I thought they were saying oh, what supplements. Okay. I thought somebody was saying what supplements. What for supplements for both. Oh, I can't believe it. Is, it was that just on more the news? Than bone Is that just on the news now, then? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw oh, it. I didn't want to you interrupt a... you in mid flow, but right. that's uh, something that. I love to borrow. Um, okay, quickly, quickly. Constipation. Yes. Um, yeah, constipation. Right. Just constipated. Okay, so not necessarily, well, it is gut related, but not always necessarily the root cause. Um, I see quite a lot of women in their sort of 40s, 50s, and um, thyroid problems can cause constipation because everything, if you've got an underactive thyroid, everything becomes quite sort of sluggish. Um, so sluggish system can cause constipation. Um, lack of bile, okay, so we need bile to form that nice soft stool. So are your stools pale as well? That'd be good to look at because if there's enough bile in there. Um, so I would, yeah, I mean, I would try the elimination diet as well. You know, that's definitely something. Try. It's very common. Constipation is very, very common. Um, and a lot of people rely on laxatives and things like that. But again, it's getting to the root cause. So it might be bile. That, that, that becomes like addictive in itself, not as in a mental addiction, but a physical addiction because yeah. your body just stops, I suppose, functioning. So you need yeah. to get, find, find out exactly and it's more common. what's it's, going it's on. It's a more common complaint in IBS than diarrhea is, although some people get both. Okay, fabulous. And she works three shifts. Yes, uh, the lady shift, works shift three work, shifts as well. Shift work is very is plays you know havoc on the gut. I'm afraid because you can't get into that routine and go at the same time. So yeah, I do feel for you there. No, um, um, okay, another one just quickly. And uh, would you go for a DNA or a gut test? Right. Okay. If you've got sort of like constipation, diarrhea, um, and real gut issues, then I'd go for the gut test. Um, but um, we can see your predisposition to certain things in DNA testing, like H. pylori. You know, perhaps if you're lacking in B12, then that opens you up to H. pylori and other gut things. So the nutrient core test is a really, really nice test for looking at overall sort of gut health but if you've got real issues right now and you want to see what your gut is doing right now then maybe a stool test would be it um dna test of course at the moment is a lot easier because it's a cheek swab and you just send it back in the post so it's a lot easier and sometimes the good thing about dna testing is i quite like you know that's the first thing sometimes to do with clients because it can point us then in the right direction so is it going to be for life? Is it, that's an so, investment for life. Really, yeah, so it? I quite do. I mean, I do like the DNA testing. Somebody asked um, right at the beginning, and I'm sorry I didn't answer you. 
Um, I think you live in America and you said, do I do consultations later than two o'clock in the afternoon? Yes, I will do if you email me. It's just on my online booking form. I don't have it because afternoons is tends to be when I analyze DNA tests and things like that. So um, please email me and um, we can get something booked in. Wild rice, yes, that might be absolutely fine because it's not rice. But again, you just got to try it. Where can you find a good elimination diet to follow? Hmm. You know what, probably, well, I didn't say my seven day plan, but there is, I think there is optional right. Well, you've got a seven day plan, haven't you? Is that, is yeah. that good for gut issues? Yeah, because on my seven day plan, now it doesn't sort of cut out all dairy, but it, you've got options. So somebody just to explain, people have been asking me if you have set meals on my seven day plan, no. So it's based around proteins and vegetables, but a good set of scales, if you can have, if you do have scales or buy one, then it's very useful if you're looking to lose weight. Um, but there are kind of rules about eating protein each meal. But you have a huge list of things you can eat, whether it's sort of chicken or you can eat red meat, you can eat things like that. But it is very much, it's low gluten. So rye is, and rye vita is allowed. But other than that, it's sort of sweet potato, quinoa, things like that, but very small amounts. So you can use that. I mean, people have done it and used it as an elimination diet. It's only seven days, but you can continue it. And can you, can you extend that discount code for, for another week then? I have, yes. I, I, I think by mistake I did it. <laughs> I, I meant to do it for the whole of April, but I did it just for a week by mistake. <laughs> it's oh. because I'm so techy. <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh, well. Mm, I've changed that now. That's not my bad. I wasn't that cheeky. You'd already done it. Oh, well, that's good. Anyway, so I got, have changed she's that got, It's now. only 45 pounds for the whole week. So, uh, and uh, where so can I've they find that seven-day plan? So, Divinia, the code is capital letters, Divinia50. I've changed it now because somebody pointed it out to me today that it run out and I didn't mean it to run out. So it's available for the whole of April, okay? Um, but it is, it's not restrictive at all. There are recipe ideas, but um, you don't have to follow set recipes. So yes, you can get things in this difficult time when you might not be able to get all ingredients. Um, it's very flexible. Okay, fantastic. And I just wanted to mention, so when I started on this like, this bloating I had I met um, a guy a, a doctor an old Indian doctor he looks about 700 years old he's really really nice bloke and he takes your pulse and everything it's all very woo woo and spiritual but he's just in this weird pharmacy in Hampstead opposite the, opposite the tube and I went there just thought oh, I'll go in and see him but he put me on Molkasan and aloe vera so you get like a cap full of Molkasan and then like about four capfuls of aloe vera, mix it in water and drink it on an empty stomach every morning. And I swear it changed my, my bloating and my reaction to certain foods within a week. So there's some, there's some I mean, I was desperate. I'd try anything and uh, I wasn't getting any, anywhere actually on my own. But that is a really good, if you're strapped for cash, just mm. go to Holland and Barrett, get some organic aloe vera and get some Molkasan online. It's about seven pounds and give it a go. It might just work. And like Pippa says, do you know, do start doing some, take out some of the obvious ones, like your, like your grains, yeah. like your dairy. I mean, I, I'm not dairy intolerant, but I mean, I think sometimes butter isn't as bad as milk. Yeah, butter's it? much lower in lactose and, and casein. And quite often it's not the lactose, it's the casein in the dairy. But I'd say, yeah, do the elimination diet. Breathe. We all should be breathing more. Breathe properly. Chew oh, I wonder your how food. she's been on the spike mat. Is it? Is she still on the spike mat? <laughs> uh, chew your food. Remember, everyone, to chew. Slow down. Enjoy your food. Don't lie on the spike spike mat while you're eating. <laughs> while you're um, but yeah, so try and reduce stress in your life where possible. Um, you know, so I think it's 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 not just the diet. It's looking at you know everything. Okay, so I think um, you need to bring it all in together. I mean, quite often it is, you know, mainly diet, but there are other things you need to look at as well. What's what about, about cream? Mm -hmm. That's got, I mean, yeah, cream. You got. I mean, I eat, I eat cream, no problem, but it depends if you're intolerant, I guess. And this is where, this is, how, this is what proves my point. We're not all exactly the same. We can't be because we've got different triggers and different stresses. And, we, you know, that's why we don't all look the same. Inside, we're not all the same either. Yeah, I mean, cream, I'm lactose intolerant and um, cream I can have occasionally, but um, my daughter made a Victoria, gluten-free Victoria sponge yesterday and we're kind of pretty much a dairy-free and gluten-free household, but she made this and it was good. And I just got my finger in that cream and ate some and I had, I was really mucousy last night and that was just from a small amount. I was like, a bit. 
<laughs> and of course, when you start getting really well, you kind of notice when things are not working yeah. for you because yeah. you react very quickly. So yeah. I read somewhere that a healthy body is a reactive body. So when yeah. I was drinking or when I was eating junk, I just had a constant feeling of bleh. There was no, I mean, I was generally bloated, I was overweight, I was tired, but I couldn't differentiate between foods. Now I'm healthy. If I have something that's not quite right for me, boom, my body reacts and I know. Yeah, you know, we should right. be sensitive. So it's like people who say, oh my God, I gave up alcohol for a month and now I just can't tolerate it. Well, you we shouldn't be able to. We should, you know, you, this is your body telling you it's kind of not good for you. So um, somebody mentioned about the DNA testing. Um, Life Code GXR, bringing out a new special offer for you, Davinia. And I forgot, I'm having oh, okay. this. So it's going to be, I'm not sure if I can say, well, I'm gonna say it. Um, it's going to be the nutrient core test and the and detox test, which I thought, okay, so brilliant, we should all be oh, detoxing right. okay. now. <laughs> so what, what what will that tell us? Uh, okay, tell so I, I mean, detox is one of my favorite ones, actually. I really like it, because I'm, I don't know, it's just a, a real thing I, I liked, is sort of studying detoxification. So, um, well, we know that hormones have to go through the liver and be do detoxified, alcohol does as well, but loads of toxins and things like that. So what we can see is, um, we can see, you know, how you might be reacting to things like pesticides, how you detoxify stress hormones even as well. Um, then we can look at your glutathione marker, you know, the one that we're both missing that gene. So therefore, people know that they're yeah, not missing that gene, aren't we? So we take NAC because yeah. we don't have that master antioxidant yeah. ability. So, so it's great to know because you know you're not bloody wasting your money mm. on supplements that you don't freaking need. And you I know? kind of where you can know, you know where to nice work with people. So is it phase one? You know, is it phase two? Is it phase three, which is the sort of, which is the gut? So we know kind of what to concentrate on um, and you know what to work on, what sort of foods to eat or not to eat, you know, what supplements to take lifestyle things so yeah i love the detox report actually so they're bringing that one out and it's going to be i think the same price as the female health one was and if anyone who's done the female health one i think they'll do a deal to add on the detox so i'll, I'll get some i'll get some info for you okay so kombucha what's your thinking on that i drink gallons of it i drink it where i would have a glass of wine i drink it if i'm stressed so where I would have a glass of wine, so at nine in the morning. Yeah. Um, I, drink, I drink a lot of kombucha. I should really make my own. My favorite is a tiny little company called Bo Kombucha. And they've got, one, they've got two of them. One's called Green Sencha, one's called China White, and it's lovely. Got me right the way through Christmas without any alcohol cravings. I really like it. And it does give me a little bit of energy. And you can make your own kombucha. It doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, you can make any of the fermented foods. I mean, I tried sauerkraut, sauerkraut and it exploded, so I, I gave up on that one. Um, it really That's a and it was salty. Yeah, I think it's just really active and it's salty. And I think you have to choose what are the things that you want to make. So I make all my own nut melts and I really enjoy doing that. But you know, I don't, you know, I'm 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 not making I know I can buy a good sauerkraut that's unpasteurized, so I just buy it. Um but you can make I'm all gonna of these I'm, things. I think Matthew and I are gonna give scenes we're in lockdown here. And over here actually in Spain, they don't have very good sourdough bread. I really oh, bloke with theirs. Really. So they only use like 10% or so. I can't actually understand. Yeah, no, it's rubbish really. in Spain. It's really bad. So we're going to try and make it because I've not eaten bread You're for not. ages. You're going to nurture the baby. We're going to make our own star sourdough. Yeah. That's right. Really so we're going to make our own sourdough. Everything. We did it once before and it was dense. <laughs> it was like a cracker, a heavy cracker. So, I mean, it's just trial and error. Let's face it. Generations ago, that's how everyone ate bread. It wasn't like Warburton's, soft and gooey. It was always slightly fermented, so people didn't have this massive gut reaction and all the knock-on effects that gluten causes us because sourdough is so much better. Yeah. So but I'm going to really try and nail it. I'll save myself a fortune because that's yeah. seven quid in Whole Foods. It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing homemade. But of course, things like just apple cider vinegar is, a, is probiotic. So that's... Yes, amazing. actually, do you know what? If I've had a... If I've been out for dinner... And I don't know whether you will agree with this or not, but it's one of my usual little throw something down my neck hats. So if I've been out for dinner to a restaurant and I've just like gone off menu, I've eaten whatever, and I know I feel sluggish and bloated, what I do when I get home, I'll have about four activated charcoal tablets and then I'll drink about 
that much uh, apple cider vinegar in that much water and just neck it back. And I normally wake up in the morning less bloated than I would have done. I, I mean, I'm I a big fan of apple cider vinegar and I think most people suit it. You know, some people don't suit all fermented foods and things, but most people suit apple cider vinegar. And I also, you know, what I'm really loving is that chickpea miso. So I'll have to do a post on it. So, because not everyone likes soy, but from Narvi Organics, it's a huge pot. They sell this chickpea miso and it's so nice. So I'm making lots of dressings, salad dressings with that. It's really good. So that's a nice fermented food as well. And don't forget your prebiotics to feed that good bacteria as well. Your onions, your garlic, your asparagus, your leeks. So Yeah, I think we, we all eat those, don't we? I mean, I think we're... we're... The service, I mean, I eat tons of onions all the time. It's one of my favorite salads. So, I mean, I'm constantly having like prebiotics. So, I mean, it is a big subject, but it is manageable. And you can, the great thing about fermented foods and drinks is you can, you can do it yourself, really, can't you? You don't have to spend a fortune and plant it organic and whole foods or wherever else you bloody go to like I do. And um, soya I does upset some people. But some people can tolerate well um, fermented soy. So I can't. Like the, I'm rubbish on any yeah, soy. You're not any good with soy. As well. I mean, a lot of people don't get on with soy. It's up there with you know, you know food that people can be intolerant to. Some people are better on um, tempeh or fermented tofu. So I don't again, think when it's been fermented, it means like because plants don't really want to be eaten because they want to breed. That's their natural instinct to try and talk crazily but that's why they send out these um almost like anti like these toxins yeah. to stop yeah. animals from eating them yeah. that's why often plants themselves. do make you blow up because that's yeah. their defensive mechanism they're not just there going hi humans hi cows eat me so mm -hmm. cows won't necessarily cows know not to eat x y and z whereas other humans will just eat it because it's trendy you know so this is why soya can can be inflammatory because it's a baby plant it doesn't want to be eaten it wants to go in the ground and make more plants so that's their defense mechanism and that's why obviously dead animals don't do that because they've already died so yeah for hashimoto's uh, you might want to try avoiding oh, soy. Yes. you know there's a very good book an author um isabella went i think is her name again Divinia, i'll give you the details and you can put it up she has um, a really good um, book on Hashimoto. So she's a doctor or a, ph a pharmacist, I think she is actually. Um, but she, um, she's got a really good book, had one or two books on Hashimoto. So I think that would be a really worthwhile buying that one off Amazon. Perfect. Yeah. Okay then, Pippa, we, we didn't do half an hour. Oh my God, we did an hour again. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's it. I'm not going to get carried away chatting. There's absolutely no, no. I mean, I've got so much to do. Blah, 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 blah. Next minute, yeah. It's five to ten here. Don't know where the kids it's are. Bedtime. Oh, everyone now just <laughs> shut down that, that blue light. Just get away from it. Get away from us and just everyone just, you know, calm down now. Let's get everyone. that cortisol down. Pip has put me on a device ban. So I'm going to go and put my blue blocker glasses on and watch some Netflix with i don't know what am i going to eat tonight probably have a glass of kombucha and i think matthew's done a seafood salad so i'll probably have that in bed like a pig there we go she's getting off her her, her devices and she's putting on her glasses what's the what's the bedding we see a cheeky little photo on her story <laughs> hello <laughs> The blue blockers. They do work though. Yeah, it's fabulous. Okay, guys. So just to remind you all, all this will go on my YouTube channel tomorrow, along with everything else, including my new highlights. What do you think, Pippa? You did that yourself. Yes, I did. I did it live with my friend who's a hairdresser oh, in South see Africa. That. He taught me through painting it on. You know what? So that's, that's on a YouTube that's channel. That's really good. I wish you could burn. I mean, he was like, he was itching to get on a plane and come and like take the things out of my hands. I've bought clippers now, so I've got all cocky. And I was, <laughs> was he getting, gonna get, like, I bet he was getting really stressed out because he was seeing yeah, he was so like, stressed. No, I think it looks really good. Really good. Not too bad, is it? Nothing fell out, so that's a win. Okay, guys, so as I said, everything of this is going to go on uh, my YouTube channel. Pippa, I'll send it over to you and you can yep. upload it in your, on your YouTube Thank or your you. website yep. where it's all in place. And of course, Pippa and I are available for any DMs or any questions. And when it does go up, I'll make sure there's a full list of all the supplements we've mentioned so you don't have to Great. stop 
starting and stopping. It'd be great with your YouTube channel because everyone can sort of find everything quite easily. I have some videos on my YouTube channel, but to be honest, I don't really upload them enough. I've got loads to upload. But there is a hunky one on there of when I worked with a guy called Mike Thurston, who's a big fitness YouTuber. There you go, ladies. Just you an afternoon looking. perusal. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, listen, have a lovely evening and let's all say a prayer for Boris. What a horrible, yeah. horrible situation. Yeah, go the go country go. Goes. All right, guys. No, no, God bless. And I will see you ASAP. Pippa, thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.